of Mahoney Said as I look back over my life And I think things over I can truly say that I've been blessed I have a testimony Said sometimes I couldn't see my way through The Lord, he brought me out Well, right now I'm free I've got the victory I have a testimony That as I look back over my life And I think things over I can truly say that I've been blessed I have a testimony Said when I think about Jesus and what he's done for me And when I think about Jesus I said may pray I can dance, 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 dance All night is alright Said I can dance all night I can shout all night I can run all night I can dance all night I said when I think about Jesus and what he's done for me And when I think about Jesus and how he set me free I can dance, 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 dance All night, it's alright Cause I, I gotta praise I gotta praise and I gotta let it out I gotta praise Yes, I, I gotta praise I gotta praise and I gotta let it out I gotta praise and I, I gotta praise I gotta praise and I gotta let it out I gotta praise Come on and look what the Lord has done Yeah, well, look what the Lord has done Daddy healed my body and he touched my mind Save me, it was just in time, so I'm gonna praise his name. His name is just the same. Why don't you come on and praise him? Look what the Lord has done. Come on and look what the Lord has done. Well, look what the Lord has done. That he promised me when I was on my knees, he would save my family, so I'm gonna praise his name. His name is just the same Why don't you come on and praise Him Look what the Lord has done Cause I, I gotta praise I gotta praise and I gotta let it out I gotta praise Yes, I, I gotta praise I gotta praise and I gotta let it out Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the new time, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus till the sun goes down. Come on and praise him, praise him, on and praise him in the morning. Praise him, praise him, praise him till the sun goes down. Come on and love him, come on and love him in the morning. down cause I, I gotta praise I gotta praise and I gotta let it out I gotta praise yes I, I gotta praise I gotta praise and I gotta let it out I gotta praise I, I gotta praise I gotta praise and I gotta let it out I gotta praise I don't know what God's done for you, but you need to praise Him.
This is the week of deliverance. Do you need a deliverance? You need a praising. I said you need a praising. If God's ever done anything for you, you need a praising. If God ever brought you through anything, I gotta praise. Come on, why praise and I gotta let it out. I gotta praise. I gotta praise. I gotta praise and I gotta let it out. I gotta praise. Anything for you, you need to praise. I said it makes me want to shout. Well, hallelujah! Thank you, Thank Jesus. you Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. I said it makes me want to shout. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor. think about all that he done for me. You know what he done for you. I said, you know where he brought you from. You used to be strong out on something. You used to depend upon alcohol. And look at you now, you're free. Look at you now, you're free. Look at you now, you're free. Look at now, you're free. You used to be all bound up with sin, but look at you now, you was free. You're free. You used to couldn't come home. As a husband, as a wife, you couldn't find your way home. But look at you now, you're saved, you're free. I don't know about you, but I just thank God. That I think it makes me want to shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Lord, you're worthy. worthy. Come on, choir. All the glory and all the honor and all the praise. I said it makes me want to shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. I said it makes me want to shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. 
wanted God to show up and he began to tell him there was no one like you. You've always been there when I needed you most. Choir, let's sing this one more time. Cause there's no one like you. No, 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 no one like you. Lord, you've always been there when I needed you most. There's no one. There's no You've always been there. And I know you ain't going to fail me this time. You've always been there. You've always been there. I may have backed away, but you've always been there. I love you, Jesus. No one like you. This time, there's no one, there's no one, nobody like my Jesus, nobody like my Jesus. you just go ahead and put your hands up and begin to proclaim it. Begin to speak those things, what you want to see that you don't see. Begin to speak it. Begin to speak it over your children. Begin to speak it over your grandchildren. Begin to speak it over your husband. Begin to speak it over your wife. Begin to speak it. Begin to speak it. Begin to speak it. Begin to speak it it like you've never spoken before. Would you begin to speak it? Don't speak it, God, if you can. He can. Oh, don't speak it, Lord, if you can, Lord, if you will. You already know what His will is. Your will, His will is for your family to be saved, your house to be blessed. Begin to speak the Word of God over your situation. Begin to speak the Word of God over your situation. Begin to speak the Word of God, and the devil has to back up. I said, the devil has to back up. Come on, choir. Some of you, you're working through some things, but the devil didn't destroy you. How if the devil would have had power, he would have already killed you. If the devil would have already had power, he would have already killed you. But this is our week of victory. This is our week of coming out. This is our week of overcoming. We see what God done this morning. We heard the word of God this morning. We heard the prophecy concerning this house this morning. And what God's about to do, he's going to use every one of us to do it. It ain't about who stands behind this pulpit. It ain't about who's got the mic or who's in the choir. It's not about who's in the amen corner. But God wants to use everyone in the house. He wants to let his anointing flow through us 
to throw to your family, to flow through your children, to flow through your job. Somebody need to go ahead and receive it. Somebody need to just need to go ahead and receive it. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love him? How I love Jesus. Do you love him? Do you love him? Oh, yo, I love you, Jesus. don't love you, that God is trying to show his love to you. The situation you're facing is not that God has abandoned you, but he's extended his hand to pull you through the storm, to mature you to be who he knows you're going to be. The storm you're going through is not to outcast you or to see you downtrodden, but to build you up as the man and the woman of God that he called you to be. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Oh, yes, he loves you. He loves you. To be he is so wonderful. To me, he is so Everybody stand at your feet right before we go on and hear the man of God and say this. Oh, we making the devil mad on the first night. <laughs> we make a decoration of whose side we're on the first night. It's really easy to sing it, but I want you to say it. Say it out of your heart. Say it from the bottom of your feet, oh, how you love Jesus. Just tell him that you love him. Don't ask for nothing at this time, but just tell him that you love him. Don't ask for nothing, but just tell him that you love him. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I'm telling you, this is a week of deliverance. This is a week that somebody's going to be set free. This is a week. This is the week. This is the week. This is my week. This is my week. If it's your, if you believe that God's going to do something for you, just raise your hands. I love you, Jesus.
I wish I would just holler a hallelujah. I want you to look to somebody and say, I'm in love with Jesus. Oh, I've seen some people didn't say it. Imagine what the devil's thinking about you. If you ain't in love with him, then hey, you must try. So let's try it again. I want you to look to, to the other person on the other side and say, I'm in love with Jesus. Oh, now that looks better. You're making the devil mad. <laughs> I want the devil to understand the children of God in the house. I want the devil to know whose side I'm on. I want the devil to have no misunderstanding. I, I, I want the sign to say for sure that I serve God. I want the sign to say I'm in love with Jesus. Oh, somebody say, I love him. 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 Oh, I wish somebody shout hallelujah. See why we're so happy? Because we know this is the last day. This is the last week that the devil's going to torment some of you in your mind. Because what God's going to do this week, what God's going to do this week, what God's going to do this week, some of you can put it off the next year if you want to. But I draw the line in the sand. I draw the line in the sand. Quiet, this is our week. This is our week. This is our week. Oh, it's my week. It's my week. I'm coming out. I'm coming through. I'm coming across. It's my week. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody's going to get some news this week, even before Wednesday night, that you need to come and praise God for. Somebody's going to get a good report this week, even before Wednesday night, that you need to come and praise God for. Why? Because somebody this week is going to get a word from heaven. Somebody this week between now and Wednesday is going to get a word from God that you're going to know it's a word from God and not from man. Something you've been praying for. Something you've been believing God for. I know Sister Griffin called me and said, would you pray for my love? And my brother said, I'm going up there because they said he's going to die. But you know, whenever she left and prayed and the church prayed, she come back and said, hey, he's doing so good they're going to get him out of the hospital. How do you? See, that's the way that God is. That's the way that God is. See, God is a right now God. Somebody shout Hallelujah. You may be seated right before we continue on, and I just thank God for what God's going to do in the house tonight. Because you know you're not going to get nothing else out of this meeting except what you believe God's going to do for you. Because it's expectation, and expectation is another word for faith. Expectation is what God's going to do for me this week. Expectation is what God's going to release in my life that God's going to do this week. And I say, I, I thank God in advance because I know I can give a praise to God on credit to God because God's good for it. I said, God's good for it. I said, God's good for it. Because if I praise him ahead of time, you know he's going to do it so that he gets the glory and gets to praise. I want to say thanks to all of you that stood with us financially this morning as God began to speak with Brother Up the Grove to help us on the mortgage. Hallelujah. And I just thank God for every one of you that stood and pledged up $20 a week and Hallelujah, that was $1,000 over the period of the year. And, and before the service is over, tonight, you don't want to miss what God is going to be doing. The night is only a little, it's a little, it's absurd what God's going to be doing in that great miracle service tomorrow night. Hallelujah, well, won't somebody shout hallelujah? I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise God. I just wish somebody shout hallelujah. See, it rained all week long. Some people got all froze up because it rained and got a little muggy. But hallelujah, the sun is shining today, so you should feel a whole lot better. I said, the, I said, the sun is shining. You should feel a whole lot better. I just thank God for his goodness.
spirit rises up in me It's through the fire that my weakness is made strong He never promised that the cross would not be heavy And the hills would not be hard without fighting but he said help would always come in time just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says give in just hold Hallelujah. When he gets hands get a little weak, tie a knot in the end of that rope and hang on. Hang on to that word. Stand up to your feet as we get ready to receive from God tonight. And I don't know what you come for, for I come for a miracle. I don't know what you need from God, but I need a miracle. For I, what's, what I need from God, man can't do it. Hallelujah. So I need something higher than what man can do tonight. Put your hands up and just ask God to bless you, this man of God, this prophet of God. Reverend Upper Grove, as he comes to minister in your holy name, we give you praise. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Dobbs. Just remain standing for a moment. I perceive that God is in the house. I perceive there is nothing that my God cannot do. I perceive there's music in the air just above your head. I, per I perceive the glory cloud is hanging low over you right now. Reach up into his presence and just praise him. Lord, we want to praise you tonight. We want to thank you for your glory that's in the place. Thank you for every song that was sung tonight for the choir. Lord, for the specials. Lord, for the glory that's been in this house all day long. Because, Lord, without you, we are nothing. But through you, which strengtheneth us, we are able to do all things. And I thank you tonight for every miracle in advance that's going to take place in this house tonight. Thank you for the liberation. Thank you for the salvation. Thank you because our journey on the way from here to glory is surrounded by an angelic force. I thank you for it, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's praise him tonight before you're seated. Praise him again. Praise you, the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. Praise him in spirit. Praise him in truth. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes. I once was lost in sin. But Jesus took me in 
And then a little light from heaven filled my soul Well, it made my heart in love And he wrote my name above And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right Well, let us have a little talk with Jesus Tell him all about our troubles he will hear Thank God he's gonna answer Well, when you feel You're gonna know a little fire is burning Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right Well, he's all right All right All right All right Well, just a little talk Jesus makes it right well, he's all right, all right, all right, all right. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. There may be somebody here that has some doubts or even fears. Sometimes your eyes may be filled with tears. But thank God, Jesus. <laughs> is the one I said Jesus is the one and he watches all day and night when I was 11 years old I was going to die with tuberculosis but God spoke to a little woman down South Florida down in Pahokee some of you know where that is. If you don't, it's all right. But Mother Collier laid her hand on top of my head and rebuked that devil of tuberculosis. To the amazement of doctors and nurses, God gave me a new set of lungs. And since I was 15 years old, which was 60 years ago, I've been beating the devil with this voice. Hallelujah. 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 Every time I do this, I do it to the glory of God. And thank God for Mother Collier and her faith. Whenever I go Take that, devil. Woo! To my God in prayer, I want to thank God I can always, always find Him there. And just a little talk. Y'all feel what I feel here tonight? Y'all ain't going to let me enjoy this all by myself, are you? With Jesus makes everything all right. Help me sing my little song now. Well, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in. Gonna know a little fire is burning. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Well, let us have. Let us tell him. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn it. Gonna know a little fire is burning. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. All right. <clears throat> While you're standing, I want to read to you from the Word. I like it when people stand up for the Word. How many believe you can go by the Word when everything else fails you? If you'll turn real quickly to 2 Kings chapter 7. I was praying today and I said, God, what is the order of service tonight? Now the message will sound familiar, but you never heard me preach it. God said, I'm going to give you a special anointing tonight for this message. Whew. It's going to help us get out of the rut. How many want to get out of the rut? 
Beginning with the first verse, reading down to the seventh verse in 2 Kings 7. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time. Everybody say, About this time. Shall a measure of flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria? Then a Lord, now listen to this guy's character. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt not see it. <laughs> Why is Elijah answer, a, answering him that way? You won't see it with thine eyes and shall not eat thereof because you're full of doubt. You're full of unbelief. You don't believe what the man of God says. A lot of people today are sick and some are dead because they do not believe what the man of God said. That's all right. Let it hurt a little bit. Say amen or oh me. And when Elisha told them that they were going to see a drastic reduction in the price of food. Oh, one of the lords got upset. Now, bear in mind, they were, they were starving in that city. And the third verse, there were four lepers, leprous men at the entering of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we shall enter into the city... Then the famine is in the city. If we die there, we shall die there. And if we sit here, we're going to die also. Now therefore come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. And if they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots. Everybody say a noise of chariots. And a noise of horses. Go ahead, say it. Even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight, left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. Now, Lord, bless the reading of the word. Anoint me from the crown of my silver head to the bottom of my feet throughout every avenue of my being. Turn me loose now, Lord, and use me as a minister of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you may be seated. The Lord bless you. The man of God spoke. He said, the famine is about over. <laughs> Tomorrow you're not going to have any trouble buying barley and wheat. The price is going to be so low that you can go in any store and buy it for just about nothing. Now, it's always the people that think they know everything that come against such a teaching. God tells some people you're going to prosper, and the old, what shall we call him tonight? We called him pretty good this morning. The Christ hater, devil worshiper, them that love the world more than they love God. Will always say, ah, I don't believe that. Well, they had them in Elisha's time. Only believers become receivers. Powders and doubters are the do withouters. Now, you can sit there tonight and pout, doubt, and do without, or you can come in with the rest of us and pray and believe and receive, and we're going to have church tonight. Let's give the Lord a hand if you come to have church. of a sudden outside of the city was four lepers 
men that were dying with the worst disease that you could have in that day. They were not allowed to associate with anybody. They were commanded to carry around a big sign, I'm a leper. They were commanded by the priest to cry out, unclean, unclean, keep your distance, stay away, I'm unclean. Now notice this pitiful group, four men. I've always visualized them, maybe after dark somewhere, sitting around a campfire and talking. Now see if this hits anybody. If I don't hit you, I'm not doing my job. Let's hear that conversation. One of them said, man, I had it rough today. Yeah, what happened? He said, I lost a toe. See, leprosy just keeps eating and eating. and Toes fall off and fingers fall off and noses fall off. Nothing but death is what they're facing. No cure for it in those days. Listen close to the conversation. Another one probably piped up and said, i never been in so much pain in all my life. I've never had so much trouble as I've had in all my life. I've never seen the time in my life that the world was just pushing me down and down. There's no hope, no hope, no hope. I lost an ear this morning. third one chimes in. There's no way out. You ever heard this kind? There's nothing we can do. Did the ever, devil ever tell you that? Amen. Make you stay awake all night and worry and fret. There's no way out. Huh. Your great grandma had cancer. Your mama had it, and you got it now. Symptoms are the same. All of a sudden, your world comes to a standstill. That third leper, listen to him. I'm in pain. I can't hardly walk. My foot is just about disjointed. But there was a fourth one in there. Hang in. There was a fourth leper. And from somewhere, this man got a hold of some sense. Somehow, maybe deep down in, in the uttermost part of his heart and his, his being, something said to him, Hey, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I don't want to hear no more of this grumbling. I don't want to hear any more of this complaining. Come on. I don't want to hear. Oh, glory to God. Somebody's listening to this. Somebody's hearing this now. I don't want to hear any more of that. What are you talking about? He said, why sit around here until we die? Why? Man, if we go back home, they're starving to death. We're going to die if we go back there. Listen close now. If we sit here, we're going to die. Listen to all this grumbling, complaining, fault finding. Help me, Lord. I'm trying to be good. Let's go down to the camp of the enemy. The Syrians are camping out. A deadly enemy, a known enemy. The worst thing they can do is to kill us and we're going to die anyway. <laughs> now, I don't know if this strikes you like it strikes me or not, but I see four helpless. Let, let me paint the picture for you. This is the way it was. Bloody rags. 
Look at this army. What an army. Four old leprous men dragging their feet and trying to get down to the camp of the Syrians. And here they go. Pitiful. No hope. But one of them said, I know one thing for sure. I'm not going to sit around here and die in my misery. I'm going to do something. At twilight, they rose up. And they headed toward the camp of the enemy. Now, I want you to notice something here. If this don't make you shout, your shout is stuck. As these men approached the enemy, not running from the enemy, David didn't run from Goliath. He ran toward Goliath. These four men wasn't running from the enemy. They went to the enemy. The thing that troubled them the most. Now, this thing's all over me. And standing up and making an effort. Hang on. You can sit around and stew in your misery if you want to. You can find all the fault that you want to. You can grumble and complain all you want to. You can talk against this one. You can talk against that one. You can say what you want to. You can die in your miserable self. You can sit there and die where you are. Or you can do what one poor leper did. He said, why sit we here till we die? I'm going to get up. Saints, you've got to get up from that state. Get up from that misery. Get up from that complaint. Oh, Lord, let me preach a minute. Get up. Stand up. All you, I just saw something. All you got to do is just make an effort. Hear me tonight. God will not move for you until you move for God. Oh, but brother, you don't know my troubles. I'm just telling you about four men got more trouble than any of you ever had. I don't care if your mother-in-law's moved in to stay. Yeah. But you don't understand, Brother Up the Grove. My son is on dope. My husband's an alcoholic. Hey, I'm going right down the line. Whatever the trouble is, don't let the devil get you down Amen. grumbling and complaining and fault finding and saying there's nothing I can do. Oh God, this is my reward for serving you. All these years, there's nothing. Honey, get up from there and say, God, I'm going to face that enemy today. I'm going to claim my victory. I raised that boy right and somehow God's going to bring him in. Somehow. glory. I told this, this story at the convention this year uh, or December and I want to tell it to you because it ties in with what I'm saying. Sister Johnson and Brother Ralph Hart's church in Detroit, 1,307 mile road. I started a two week revival that lasted three and a half years. Not because C.S. Up the Grove was there but because I stood out of the way and said, Lord, it's yours. And there was a lady there named Sister Johnson. And I've never seen anybody as sad looking as she was. After six months, God let me call her out, making a long story short. And she said, now, brother, up the grove, I know what you're going to do. You're going to get on to me for not shouting and praising God. I mean, miracles were happening all around her. And she still sat there. 
I said to Brother Hart, what's wrong with that woman? He said, Lord, Brother, I don't know. I said, well, God's been holding me back. Won't let me call her out. And so after six months, God said, now you call her out. I said, thank you, Jesus. I called her out. And she said, now you're going to get on to me for not, not praising God. I said, you're right. You're getting warm. Let me tell you my troubles. I said, please do. She said, I have a husband that's a chronic alcoholic. Never gets home with a sober breath. God gave us one son and one daughter. She said, my daughter is in the insane institution mixing acid and alcohol and she's insane. My only son is, is in prison for selling dope. How can I praise him? How can I worship God, brother? I said, wait a minute. God said, give her a scripture. I said, all right. Here's your scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. She said, I do that. And I checked with the Spirit, and the Spirit said she does that. See, the Holy Ghost, I mean, you, you get off here in the spirit realm sometimes, and there's some peculiar things goes on. I said, in all thy ways acknowledge him. She said, I do that, and I checked with the Spirit, and the Spirit said she does that. I said, Lord, what are you doing to me? You told me to give her this scripture. <laughs> but trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. She said, I don't. And the Holy Spirit said she doesn't. But Brother Hart told me she was a charter member and was a good woman. Never missed a service. But I couldn't understand that look, you know. <laughs> don't you look at me that way. I'll be right back there. And God said, finish the scripture. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Now she did this little number. I've never heard anybody do it before. But she pointed her finger at me. She said, Ooh, I see what you're talking about, preacher. And she went into a Holy Ghost shout. And started praising God. The beauty of holiness was all over her countenance. Her feet just danced and danced and danced. She left the service, the last one to leave the service that night, shouting and praising God. The next night, I looked back where she normally sat because people are not hard to find. And this is how Pastor knows you're not here because you like to sit in one place all the time. And... Uh, so I looked back there, and it looked like a different woman to me. A big smile on her face. Spring in her step, joy in her soul, you know. Whoo, glory to God. And I took the mic straight back, and I said, what in the world happened to you? She took that mic. She said, brother, up the grove. I said, last night my husband came home. Same time, after 2 o'clock, just drunk as a skunk. I said, he comes staggering into the door, but when I looked on his face, I knew something was different. He said, honey, pray for me. A hundred yards from the house, I heard a voice. And the voice said, if I didn't give God my soul tonight, I was going to split hell wide open. Pray for me. She said, brother, up the grove in five minutes, he was stone sober. And she said, this man sitting beside me is that man. He can testify for himself. She said, I'm not through yet. She said, at noon today, I was washing my dishes, and I got a call from the insane institution. And they said, Mrs. Johnson, she said, I said, yes. Said, last night, a remarkable change came over your daughter. We don't understand it. But if she continues to improve, we're sending her home. Yes. She's getting her right mind back. Well, she did. She said, now don't stop me now, preacher. She said, at 6 o'clock I was doing my dishes again, getting ready to come to church, and said, guess what? They called me from the local sheriff's office, said, we're sending your boy home on good behavior. Yeah. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying it's time for you to say to yourself, 
Why sit we here with all of these complaints, all of this mess that bothers us, and why don't we just get up and go? If it's face the enemy, we'll face the enemy. I don't care what it is. God said something in his Hallelujah. God said in his word, and it is so plain. Just come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. I'm meek and I'm lowly in heart. Mm, somebody say something. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. How many about ready to get out of the rut? Hold them up high. Just wave them right back. How many ready to face the enemy if you have to? Come on. <laughs> and the Spirit of the Lord would say unto thee, Whosoever thou art, for I the Lord am in this house, and I will do the great and miraculous thing that thou hast asked of me, saith God. Stand to thy feet, lift up holy hands, and praise me with a loud voice. And God said, I will begin to work on thee, and thy house, saith God. Yea, praise me, saith the Lord. Praise me, praise me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise me with a loud voice. Praise me. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I dare you to scream glory. If you read the rest of the story, why are you standing? Don't sit down. It's getting too good now. Those Syrians heard a noise. There was no noise there, but they heard it. <laughs> they heard the noise of horses. They heard the noise of chariots. And it didn't end there. It said that they heard the noise of a great host. When you stand up for God, God's going to stand up for you. Hallelujah. He'll let your enemy run the other way. The Syrians ran. They went so fast or they left their horses. They left everything. And what garments they had, they just took them off because they was in a hurry to get out of there. God said for me to tell you, the enemy's on the run. God's going to let your enemy run seven ways from before your face. God's going to let the devil of poverty die at your feet. God's going to let the devil of sickness. Glory to Mohoshatah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Get out. They sought many physicians, but rather grew worse in the Bible, we're told. When she had heard of the healings of Jesus, she found what she needed for her body so well if i can but touch the hem of his garment if i can but touch some part of his robe well i know i'll be healed and my sins forgiven yes sir if i can but touch him i know i'll be whole blind bartimaeus sat 
by the highway side begging. Nobody could help him down life's weary way. But my Jesus came by, praise him now, and he heard his sad cry. Well, he touched his blinded eyes, healed him that day. Raise your right hand, if I can but touch the hem of his garment. Oh, yes, if I can but touch some part of his robe. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Well, I know I'll be healed. And my sins forgiven. Well, if I can but touch him, I know I'll be whole. Amen. So tell me why you have to wear those dark glasses. I have cataracts, and my eyes aren't working together. And I just had it Wednesday, so that's why I have them. Right. Could you remove your glasses for a moment? Because I want to put, I want to put my hand right on the lids of your eyes. Lord, what the doctor can't do, you can do. I feel divine Holy Ghost healing virtue flowing through my fingertips into her eyes. Lord, heal her totally and completely. Let the eyes work normally together as they should. And Father, remove the results of the cataracts. And in Jesus' name, let her have a 2020 vision. In Jesus, Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Open your eyes and look at me. Glory to God. How is that? Fine. That's what I want to hear. Fine. Just go praise Him. Everybody give Jesus a hand. She's fine. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. You're having some type of trouble in your knee joints. Not there. Spiritual. Having trouble standing up tall in God. Is that it? All right. Yeah. All right. I knew there's some reason I called you out. Hold up your hands. Lord, in the name of Jesus, raise him up into thy stature and into thy glory. Father, hear his cry and his prayer in Jesus' name. Take him higher than he's ever been. In the name of Jesus, say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you come a higher for lifting me up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Higher than I've ever been. Higher than I've ever been. I'm going to serve you, Lord. Better than I've ever served you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Right close around me, somebody was in an automobile accident. You're still having trouble from the automobile accident. I said he was right close to me. Here he is. Tell me about the accident. I was in my work truck and the lady pulled out in front of me and I totaled it. And I've been having real bad pains since then. And this affects your neck. Listen, saints, God's getting ready to do a miracle. See, the doctors can't do everything. They just go as far as they can. But I know a doctor that is a specialist in setting these bones, looking at you. Brother, come here and hold, hold the mic for me. Now, let me show you something. If I were to put much pressure right in here, you wouldn't be able to stand it. From this right up here, the, the vertebrae begin really right up in your skull and they come down. Oh, whew, it's tender, isn't it? Sometimes x ray can't see what God sees. Did the, did the x ray show uh, any vertebrae out of place? Or they did show that. And did it show a hairline fracture in this one right here? There's a hairline fracture. And how do you know, Brother Oaks? I'm looking at God's x-ray right here. First of all, God showed me somebody real close had this accident, and now he's showing me the trouble in your neck. It should have been well by now, but that, hear it. I've been like five or six months to a chiropractor. It's gotten better. And if it 
an adjustment, it would have been well. But see, the x-ray didn't pick up that hairline fracture. God's Holy Ghost picked it up. Now, what you didn't know is while my hand was on it, I'm anointed while I'm talking to you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, replace you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Any pain? No, sir. God showed me a replacement of a brand new vertebrae right where I had my hand. And the pain's all gone. No more trouble. Go ahead and shout and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. Glory, glory. Just move it back and forth. Glory, 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 glory. Woo! Hey, 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 Boshanaba. Somebody shout with me. Ah, oh, glory, glory. You may be seated if you can. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, darling, come here. I, I, I want to pray for you. Yeah. Well, it's your eyes. That's not all. <laughs> See, I, I testified a while ago how God healed my lungs from tuberculosis. And you got a lot of trouble in your lungs, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Does the doctor give you a name for it? No, I don't go to the doctor. You don't even go. <laughs> All right, Dr. Jesus will take over. <laughs> Amen. He's the one. <laughs> All right. You have COPD. That's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease COPD that's what it is <laughs> mm. not only that there's a spot on your lung that God wants to remove if that devil of cancer could take over see you stood for your eyes I called you out but see God knows something else now, if God heals C.S. up to grow over just a little boy, he's going to do something for you, honey. I can tell you that. Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you're going to move this spot off of this lung, and God, you're going to heal this COPD, and Father, you're going to... Ah, yabobobashanadadadabob. And touch your eyes too, Lord, in Jesus' name. Woo. Hallelujah. Mother, take three deep breaths. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Son and Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Just go praising him. Somebody give the Lord a hand. I'm believing God for total deliverance for her. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, glory. Go ahead, sing my song. Sing it. Glory. Let me pray for you, honey. Some part of his role. <laughs> I know I'll be healed. My sins forgiven. If I can but touch him, no, I'll be whole. When you were just a young teenage girl, God dealt with you, honey. You were called when you were a teenager. The devil thinks he's smart when he makes people fall. But he's not smart as he thinks he is. God said, I'll just draw out the contract papers and I'll rewrite the contract. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hey. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I will illumine your mind, and I will give thee Holy Ghost wisdom. Hallelujah. Yea, and the Lord saith unto thee, you shall open your mouth, and I will teach thee how to teach. In Jesus. Hey, yeah. Uh, now, she knows what that's all about. Somebody clap your hands. Give God the praise. 
Woo! Glory, 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 glory! Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. What put you in this wheelchair, sir? Got a rip of my aorta. Got a rip of my aorta going out of my heart. So that heart trouble uh, caused you to be so weak. Yeah, I got an aneurysm on the side of my on the side of the ground aneurysm. And what does the doctor tell you? You need operation? Yeah, I got paralyzed here. I don't want to go be able to do this to dangerous operation. Can you lift both hands above your head? Lord, in the name of Jesus. The devil causes paralysis. The devil caused, Lord, this aorta to have this aneurysm. And now, Lord, I'm asking you in Jesus' name to begin repairing it right now to the amazement of the family, to the amazement of the doctor, to the amazement of medical science. Lord, let that healing begin to come back. In Jesus' name. I'll tell you folks something about Brother Upgrove. I don't believe there's anything too hard for God. Amen. I've seen people get up out of wheelchairs. I've seen God do it gradually. I've seen God do it instantly. I've seen God begin to work in a family. And, and when the family all got straight and right with God, then the healing was complete. I've seen all kinds of things. But, sir, I'm going to tell you, I believe God is working right now in this body. I believe the aorta is being healed. I believe the paralysis is going to leave. I believe healing is going to come back to these limbs just start praising him for it in jesus name in jesus name now lord i thank you she's borne the burden and god she's held on to faith and now lord take her up father higher on that ladder of faith and let her see what she's never seen before in the realm of the spirit in jesus name glory to god everybody give jesus a hand Glory. Hallelujah. What you doing with that walker, honey? You got a slip disc in your knee. Yes, but sometimes I try to walk if I'm too much. I I usually say this. How would you like to trade the walker in for a seawalker? Would you, would you like that? Just just hold it up, just trade it in. Hey man, just hold it. In the name of Jesus, stand up and be healed. God, through the knees. Put strength in that. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come all over her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Daughter, receive your healing from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. And come on, let's walk on for God. Come on. Come on. Walk on for God. Walk on for God. Oh, she's not just walking, she's shouting. Stick with her. Glory. Go ahead, let her shout all she wants to. Woo! Hey, let's walk on down the aisle for Jesus. Come on. Outrun me. Yeah, you can do it. We don't have to go too fast. Just go praise him. Well, somebody ought to shout about it. Somebody ought to praise him. Woo! Glory! Glory! My glory! Hallelujah! Go ahead and praise him. Oh, my. The hymn of his Woo! Walk on for Jesus, honey. If I could but touch some part is then I know I'd be here. Glory to God. My sins are forgiven. take this mantle that I've laid on the backs of thousands of people. Woo, she's still shouting praising God. God gave her new knees. 
old slip disc. Well, it's back in place, so give God glory for it. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. In a few minutes, we're going to have a line, not a slow line, a fast line. People are going to run through, and I'm going to hit them with this mantle. I'm going to ask God, straighten out everything in your body, everything in your family, everything that you need from God. You might need a job. You might need a higher wage. You might need something. But how many believe if we pray and ask God, He'll do it? Raise them up high. Oh, glory to God. Hey, hallelujah. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. The Lord bless you. Before we have this Holy Ghost miracle line, how many think God miracles are real? Give the Lord another hand for it. A lot of you this morning took an envelope for $20 to bless this ministry. And I want to thank you for that. You haven't turned it in yet, but you took one. It was a sacrifice for some of you. God will bless you for it. I'm going to ask some others of you, as you come to bring your offering tonight, if you have $20 and you can bless this ministry, bring it. If you don't have 20 I want you to bring as near to it as you can. I've been all across this country, back and forth several times. I told you a while ago I've been preaching 60 years. I've seen God do a lot of things. And I'm going to go on report as telling you that Jacksonville has always supplied the needs of the revival. Give yourself a hand. Give yourself a hand. I've never left Jacksonville lacking for anything. People were good to me. I believe it's because they love the ministry of deliverance. How many in love with deliverance? I'm going to take just a moment and let you get your offering ready. If you have 20, bring it. If you don't have it, bring as near to it as you've got in your pocket right now. I don't want to take up a lot of time talking about money tonight. I just, I just know that you're going to give, and I know God's going to bless you for it. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. When you get your offering in your hand, then you can stand. When you get it ready, you can stand, whether it's an envelope or just an offering. Whatever God has given you to give, the envelope from this morning or, or whatever you're getting ready tonight, everybody get an offering in your hand. If you don't have a nickel and you'd give it if you had it, you stand too. Somebody say amen. Glory. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm waiting for a moment for you to get it ready. As soon as the offering is over, we're going to make a Holy Ghost prayer line. While you're getting it ready, let me announce tomorrow night. Tomorrow night being Monday night, usually is the night that no matter where you are, the Holy Ghost will help me find you. How many feel like if I reach my big old hand down, I can help lift you up a little bit higher? Come on. You feel that? Glory. There's no, not going to be one revival meeting like tomorrow night on Monday night. I feel at this point like I may be praying for eyes. I felt special faith when I prayed for my sister back here. I may be praying for eyes, especially tomorrow night. All right? Everybody stand with me all over the audience. Come on, everybody stand. Glory. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Everybody say, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to count to three, and when I say three, I want you to come and bring your gifts and give it as unto the Lord in His service. One, two, three. Come right on. God bless you, everyone. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> well, glory, glory. So if you don't have $20, bring $10, bring $5, bring $100, bring some change. Everybody bring the best that you can. And also don't forget tonight when the service is over with, the teens are having a fundraiser going to Mexico and they're having a potato sale. A great time of fellowship in the, in the family center. The cost is only $3. So if you can help our teens out tonight, God will bless you.
when the service is over with, you can have a great time of fellowship. But if you need prayer, stay around. And you don't want to miss that miracle service tomorrow night. I ever saw this sister she weighed 345 pounds in the old church and one night God directed me back she's always sitting near the back on the right I'll never forget it and I called her out and I asked God to let her lose a hundred pounds well she lost that and then continued on till she lost 200 pounds from 345 down to 145 let's give the Lord a hand for that miracle God bless you Oh, yes. Glory. Right. 